In our next example here, we're going to have both the source and the observer moving. Now they're moving in the same direction, although the source is moving faster than the observer. So let's see what happens here. Again, we use the same equation that the frequency observed by the observer is equal to the frequency of the source times the ratio of the velocity of sound in air, plus or minus the velocity of the observer, divided by the velocity of sound in air, plus or minus the velocity of the source. All right. Now we have both of these velocities, so let's plug everything in. So this is equal to 500 hertz, that's the given right here, times the velocity of sound in air was given to be 340 meters per second. We're not going to put in plus or minus, we'll just leave that blank, but we will put in the velocity of the observer, which is 10, and the velocity of the source, which is 20. And again, it doesn't matter if they're moving to the left or the right, we just plug in the number, the sign will be determined by what we expect to happen, or is going to happen with the change in the frequency. So let's take it one step at a time. The velocity of the observer, the observer is moving away from the source. Regardless of what the source is doing, he is moving away from the source. So if an observer is moving away from the source, we would expect to hear a lower frequency. Because if you imagine the waves, sound waves reaching the observer, one wave reaches the observer, before the next uh, wave reaches the observer, the observer will have moved, so it takes a little bit longer for the wave to get there, so it appears if the wavelengths are longer, that means it appears as if the frequency is lower. All right, so lower frequency means we need a negative in the denominator, because that will give an overall smaller quantity in the numerator, therefore we expect a lower frequency. Now, in the, with the source, the source is moving towards the observer, so that would cause the waves to be bunched up, smaller wavelengths, higher frequency, an apparent higher frequency. So what number do we need to have in the bottom to get a higher number? Well, if we make the denominator smaller, we'll get a larger frequency, so therefore we need a negative here. That will cause the denominator to be smaller, which causes this number here to be bigger. So both of them in this case will be negative. And so what do we get when we work out the numbers? We get 500 hertz times 330 in the numerator, 320 in the denominator. So the combined effect of both moving, the source actually will be moving faster, so the distance will be closing. The effect will be that overall the observer will still hear a higher frequency, and that's evident by this fraction right here. The fraction is bigger than 1, so we get 500 times 330 divided by 320. And we get 516, round it off, so this is equal to 516 hertz. And that would be the frequency observed by the observer. All right, that's how you do that. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this. And I'll show you a couple more examples, a couple more combinations. Uh, so at that point, you should pretty well know how to do any sort of combination like that.